County. And during the past five and a half years, we have hosted 22 consecutive gatherings of our partner organizations. And we have featured presentations by many of our partners from large organizations like CH2M Hill and Good Samaritan Regional Medical Center to very small ones like Hollyoke Music Studio and Cycle Solutions. These gatherings have also given us an opportunity to learn about the projects and progress of the coalition's action teams. Today, we are going to hear briefly about two coalition-related projects, and then we'll hear from three of our partner organizations about what they're doing to help create a sustainable community. Thanks. So, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through some of the steps that we went through. If you've been in the town hall or seen this before, it's a lot of the same stuff, but it's to kind of give you an idea, jog your memory, and then when we open up that discussion, maybe you'll have stuff to add about what you have seen or what you've been working on in your events. So first for waste, um, OSU Campus Recycling provided uh, recycling stations throughout the event, and local Boy Scout Troop number 163 volunteered to staff the bins, helping attendees sort. All trash cans were removed from the building, except those that were built in in the restrooms, so that everything was directed to those staff stations only. Bathroom paper towels were collected for composting, and we collected reusable paper during cleanup after the event. Uh, continuing on with waste, everything served by Valley Catering was compostable. Uh, exhibitors and attendees were asked to avoid bringing or distributing non-recyclable items in the marketing materials. And we also borrowed name tag holders from OSU University events and returned them for reuse so we didn't need to use disposable ones. For energy, uh, the OSU Sustainability Office controlled lighting levels, only turning them on, on what was needed for each part of the agenda. Uh, so, and then also offsets provided by Pacific Power Blue Sky offset all of the electricity used at the event and then some and the environmental benefit of that offset was equivalent to not driving 1,265 miles or planting 15 trees. So thank you for that. And for water, uh, once again, bathroom faucet flow rates were labeled so attendees could choose by efficiency, as you can see in that picture. Uh, and then the restrooms in the facility only um, have low flow toilets and urinals and those were labeled as such for food, delicious, delicious food, that was provided by Valley Catering featured many local six foods, which is defined as um, being from the six counties touching and including Benton County. So this included, you can see cheese, crackers, flour, fruit, hummus, potatoes, salsa, tofu pate, tortillas and tortilla chips, vegetables, and wild rice. And then all um, that was served on compostable serving ware, which was from Ekna Tech, which is also a local company. And we serve municipal tap water um, rather than bottled or shipping in filtered water or other beverages. And then lastly, you can see a picture of the beautiful signage that was hung so people could see what the local ingredients were in the, in the food. Well, so I'm on the Natural Areas Celebration Week um, steering committee, and Molly Monroe is the Natural Areas Action Team Coordinator that oversees the week. So if you have any questions afterwards, find one of us, and we can talk to you about some of these events individually. Um, so yeah, it's the fourth annual May 4th that starts this Saturday through the 12th. A huge range of um, events, family friendly, family friendly, all fun and free. So uh, I hope to see you guys at one or more of these. Um, just to say, this is, a, this is a photo from last year, one of the events during the week, an archeology span walk out in Kings Valley with Greenbelt Land Trust to work for. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so Annette just kind of covered the, um, the action items in the long range goals of the Natural Areas Action Team. And there's three main goals. The third one is the one that this event is really focused on. It's by 2030, 60% of community members will participate in natural areas appreciation programs or restoration um, activities. And I think, you know, we're, we live in a place where people enjoy the outdoors. We already recreate, we really value our natural resources. I think that this is a goal that we can really attain. And I think Natural Areas Celebration Week is um, getting us there and making huge strides towards that. I started, um, I started uh, my business in 2010, and it was uh, an extension of a hobby that I had done for about 15 years of experimenting with different wood products. I used to make 
bench shaft wood kayak paddles. I used to make wood eyeglasses and made wood helmets and a few other different things, a lot of do-it-yourself projects. And this is one of the things I got a lot of great feedback from. And uh, there's a company called Schwood um, that was uh, some kids from Oregon State University started making wood sunglasses. And I thought, oh, I should try harder to commercialize my, my glasses. So it kind of inspired me to think, you know, okay, well, I'm gonna try and do that with the, with the helmets. And um, I got a patent for the, the organ, the um, natural material shell and the natural material insert. They're the only ones that ever passed protective testing, and they're more than um, just decorative.